Welcome. We're so glad you're here. We are a lively church family who love Jesus and are excited by what he is doing. We believe that our relationship with him changes our lives and impacts the lives of those around us. We know that we can't do life alone. So we look to support and care for each other through life's ups and downs. We care about our streets, our neighbours and our towns. And we want to make Jesus known in Salte, Sutton, Bailden, Eastburn, Bingley, Menston, the Air Valley, Bradford University. Welcome to City Valley Church. Loving Jesus, growing together, reaching Yorkshire and the nations. Welcome to City Valley Church. It's great to have you with us, especially if you're joining us for the first time. My name's Naomi and I'm one of the leaders at our Airedale site. We believe that God is good and we are passionate about sharing his love in the communities we live in. We pray that you will know Jesus' love and experience his presence this morning. So welcome, let's enjoy celebrating Jesus together. Octonauts, to your stations!
The desert and the parched land will be glad. The wilderness will rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it will burst into bloom. It will rejoice <coughs> greatly and shout for joy. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendour of our God. Strengthen 
in the feeble hands, steady the knees that give way. Say to the over fearful heart, be strong, do not fear, for if a God will come, he will come to save you. Water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand will become a pool, the thirsty ground bubbling springs. And a highway it will be there. It will be called the way of holiness. It will be for those who walk or, or come that way. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them. And sorrow and sighing will flee away. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. He said, I am the way into this kingdom of flourishing in the wilderness, this kingdom of the goodness of the Father God. Let's continue to honour him. You are the way, the truth and the life. We live by faith and not by sight for you.
Hope is meant to be tangible. You're meant to be able to touch it and see it and feel it. And that's one of the reasons why Ship the Christians Together are partnering with Christians Against Poverty to launch a debt centre for our town. And we are so, so excited about the opportunity to do this because we know, sadly, there are many people that need help. There are people in our town who are struggling in poverty, often through no fault of their own. And we're going to share a little bit about why we're doing that and what that means in these next few moments. Hi, I'm Thomas and I'm going to be the centre manager. I've been yeah, living in Bradford um, for the past four years where I've been part of City Valley Church uh, here in Shipley and involved. Um, I was studying at the university and I've been very involved in evangelism and uh, outreach among students. Um, and so really I want to carry that heart for sharing Jesus with those who've not met him um, and those who've yeah, maybe never come across the gospel into this work. I'm really excited to be um, partnering with Cap who just have such a heart that it's not about just doing great debt work or just doing the great prayer and evangelism, but these things always come together. And it's, yeah, just one strategy of sharing the good news of Jesus practically and also spiritually. So I see this as a, a wonderful opportunity for us to share Jesus um, with people in Shipley um, in the surrounding area, as well as helping them with really um, pressing practical needs. Um, but this is not something that I'll be able to do myself, um, but it's really an opportunity for us to gather a team together and to, yeah, just see cooperation and unity um, working between different people with different skills from different churches, um, all working together to serve these clients. So there'll be need for some to be helping in really practical ways, for some to be coming alongside clients as um, befrienders, and for some to just be supporting this whole work um, with ongoing prayer. And really just want to, yeah, say that this is for all of us to be involved in, um, that, yeah, we want to create churches where when a client wants to visit a church, we're all um, welcoming and they feel like everybody in the church is better kept and we pray for them. Good morning, City Valley. It's good to be with you guys, even if it's not yet in person. Uh, I'm afraid even after a year of Zoom meetings, I still find it really difficult talking to a camera. So if this just feels a bit weird, please bear with me. One of the things that uh, quite a number of people have said or I've heard them say that is that as a result of these challenging circumstances that we've all been going through, it's kind of made them uh, recognize or more aware of the things that are really important to them in life. And uh, I, you know, from my point of view, I think one of the most important things has got to be knowing the Father loves us. Um, knowing that he's for us, that he loves us on our bad days as much as on our good days. In fact, it's particularly important to know that on our bad days. And who, who isn't having a, a bad day or two at the present time? Sadly, to me, a lot of people have kind of got the wrong idea about what God's like. They see him as being disappointed with them or disapproving of them. And they just find it really hard to relate to God as father. And uh, sometimes what's at the bottom of that is what we might call a father wound. It's like there's an unhealed hurt that's been caused either by our natural father or by a spiritual father, a church leader, or by anyone, really, it could be anyone who's been a father figure in our lives. And uh, when we've been hurt by such a relationship, it can cause us to see our heavenly father uh, through the filter of our experiences. But 
really, if that's what's happening to us, if that's what we're experiencing, then we've got it the wrong way round because our our model of fatherhood is our father who is in heaven. And it's from him that all fatherhood derives its name. And so even the best, the very best of human fathers are just an imperfect reflection of the father heart of God. Now, at the beginning of, of, of chapter three of the first letter of John, it's one of my favorite verses in the whole Bible. Every time I read it, I just kind of want to burst out singing. So here it is, 1 John chapter 1, uh, sorry, chapter 3 and verse 1. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are The Father's love towards us is expressed in so many different ways, but perhaps the most amazing way of all is that he calls us his children. In his classic book, Knowing God, Jim Packer makes the point that our adoption as God's children is the highest privilege that the gospel offers. So many of the things that are true about you are true because you are adopted by our Father. So this morning, I want to remind you of just five things about yourself that are true because God has lavished his love on you in this way. Firstly, because you are adopted, you have a new identity. When it says that that we are called children of God. That's just, that's not just like a name or a title. More than anything else about you, that is what defines who you are. Your identity is no longer determined by your natural family or by what you do, by what you have, by what you achieve, by what other people think of you. No, you're a child of God. That is who you are. And when the legal authorities declare that a child is adopted, from that moment on, the child takes on a new identity. They're called by a different name. And in the same way, when you come to God through faith in Jesus, God declares that you legally are now part of his family. You get a whole new identity. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. Maybe you've watched the TV program, Who Do You Think You Are? Uh, Who you think you are is actually of huge importance. It will have a big effect on how you live day, day to day. If you think you are useless, unlovable, disappointing, that's going to have a massive effect on every relationship you have and everything that you do. So who you think, so who do you think you are? You're a child of God. That is what you are. Secondly, because you are adopted, you're invited to intimacy. Not only are you called his child, but you get to call him father. He invites you to come with confidence, knowing that that he's for you, that he delights in you. He wants you to have a relationship with him that is like a father-child relationship. He puts his spirit in you and he prompts you to call him Abba, Father, Papa. There's still a reverence, but along with that, there's an intimacy, there's affection, there's security, there's an awareness that you are loved, that he delights in you, that you belong to him. Now, practices like reading the Bible and praying and so on, uh, these are not things we, we do to try to keep in his good books. They are ways for us to enjoy our relationship with our Heavenly Father and to get to know him better. Third thing is that adopting you was God's plan from the beginning. You know, sometimes you might hear a child described as an accident. Maybe that's something that's been said about you, that you weren't planned. But the fact is, nobody adopts a child by accident. No one who adopts a child says, well, I don't know how that happened. It involves 
a definite decision and a plan. An adopted child is a wanted child. And that's how God looks at you. Ephesians 1, uh, 4 to 5 says, For he chose us in Christ before the creation of the world. In love, he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ. You know, sometimes we tend to think, I don't know that this is so true nowadays, but in the past, people tended to think of adoption as plan B uh, when people couldn't have children of their own. F- but for God, adopting you was always plan A. Fourth thing, because you're adopted, you take on the family likeness. Not always immediately. Sometimes the behaviors that a child uh, has developed before their adoption can take, uh, you know, a time, a little, quite a bit of time to change. Behaviors can be deeply embedded. Uh, it's the same with us. What brings about change, though, is is coming to know that we are loved, being secure in the Father's love, knowing that you're not on probation, that your Father isn't going to change his mind about you, that you're home for good. That's what Paul is praying for, for the church in Ephesians 3, that we might have power to know this love that surpasses knowledge. We can't figure this out with our minds. It's something that has to be revealed to our hearts by the Spirit. And as that happens, then slowly but surely, we change from the inside out. The fruit of the Spirit begins to grow in our lives. New desires, new appetites, new aspirations, a new vision of who you are and what your life is for. Of course, there are going to be times when we will blow it, when we fall back into our old ways. But, but you know, the Father will never disown his child. It's like in the story that Jesus told about the the son, the father with two sons. One of them wanted his inheritance and went off and blew it. But the father never lets go. And he, he waits and he watches for his child to come home. And, and, and when you do, even when you're still a long way off, the father will run to meet you with open arms. Uh, finally, because you are adopted, you share in the family inheritance. In 1 John 3, uh, verse 1, the, the word that's translated children is more accurately, accurately translated sons. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called the sons of God. But that word has got nothing to do with gender. It's about our standing as heirs. It applies to both male and female equally. It means that as God's adopted children, we share in the inheritance of the Son, of Jesus. We receive all the privileges and benefits that go with his sonship. Romans 8 verse 17 says, Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. So it's like the Son of God was the sole heir. It was all his, yet he comes and lays down his life for us so that we who deserve nothing can share in all that's his by right. The only begotten Son lays down his life in order to bring many adopted sons to glory. That is truly mind-blowing. What is it that we stand to inherit? Well, for starters, there's eternal life in God's new creation, a new heaven and a new earth. That's There's not a lot of detail in the scripture about what that's going to be like, but what's clear is that we will all experience life in a fullness that right now is just difficult. We don't have the capacity to imagine what it's going to be like. The passage in 1 John that we read earlier goes on to say this. It says, Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we will see him as he is. At last, we will be where we were created to be in God's presence forever. He will wipe away every 
tear. I have a feeling that that's when the real work that God has prepared us for will begin. This life, in a sense, is just the training course. Maybe this morning you're asking, what do I have to do to get all this? The answer is very simple. You just have to say yes to Jesus. John 1 verse 12 says, to all who receive him, that's Jesus, to all who believe in his name, he gives the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent or a husband's will, but born of God. God doesn't adopt us because we're better or smarter. It's not because of anything you've done or anything you haven't done. He adopts you because of his heart towards you and because of who he is, the Father. All that's required of you is that you walk through the door that's been opened to you by Jesus, by believing in him. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. Amen. Thank you for listening. And I will see you shortly on the Zoom call. Thank you for joining us this morning. We hope that you've experienced God's goodness and love during our time together. If you're watching this live, in a few moments, we'll be catching up on Zoom and we would love to see you there. As we draw this time to a close, I just want to highlight a few things. If you're new tuning in, we'd love to hear from you and have the opportunity to get to know you better. If you want to find out more about our midweek connect groups, children's and youth groups, or even if there's something you'd like to receive prayer for, then check out our website where you can also get in touch with us. We also regularly run Alpha, which is ideal if you're exploring the Christian faith for the first time or just want a boost to your faith. Details of the next Alpha course can be found on our website, where you can also access lots of great resources for helping you grow in your Christian faith. For all the latest information on church life, check out our weekly email, which has all the key dates, information and events that are coming up. Thank you again for joining with us. We hope to see you again soon and pray that you have a great week.